the conditional probability can be extended to multiplication theorem. But before going to the multiplication theorem, let me explain to you what are the dependent and independent events. Dependent and independent events. What are the dependent events and what are the independent events? Simple. In the name itself, you have that. Dependent events are those events. If the occurrence of one event influences the occurrence of other event, then they are said to be dependent events. If the occurrence of uh, another e uh, one event does not influence the occurrence of another event, then they are said to be independent events. Independent events. Okay. Let us see now a question. Yes, please, as a question. Uh, hello, sir. Yeah. Sir, in the last problem, that uh, die problem, you wrote in the sample space 1, 1, 7. Yes. Sorry, sorry. You're right, you're right. You're right. Good, good, good. <laughs> right. So, it starts from what? 2, 6. Good, good, good. What's your name? Sir, Panindra. Panindra. Good, good, good. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you, correct, correct. Okay, correct. So let me correct it. Let me correct it. Good. Now, I wrote uh, 1 comma 7. That's wrong. That's wrong because uh, the die contains only maximum 6. Okay. So in this case now, 2, 6 because sum is 8. And it is 3, 5. And it is 4, 4. And it is 5, 3. And it is uh, 6, 2. Good, Panindra. So, how many are there? Totally, of course, you got five. Five. So, it, the answer is correct, but uh, instead of two, six, I wrote one, seven. Instead of two, six, I wrote one, seven. So, the total number is, of course, five only. And the favorable is uh, only one, that is two, six, it is one. So, probability, required probability is of one by five. One by five. That's good. So, now the dependent and independent events. So what are the dependent and independent events? Let us see now. Let us see. Dependent event, dependent means if the occurrence of one event influences the occurrence of other event, then they are said to be dependent events. If the occurrence of one event does not influence the occurrence of another event, then they are said to be independent events. Okay. Now, let us define now dependent events. Dependent events, let us take an example. Otherwise, uh, example like this. Dependent events. Let me, I have a bag. In that bag, I have 17 balls. I have a bag. In that bag, I have 17 balls. Different colored balls. Different colored balls. I have taken one ball and I have seen its color. And, and I replace the ball in the bag. And uh, that event is named as capital A. And second time again, I have drawn another ball. I have seen its color and I replaced it. That event is said to be event B. Now you think of it, whether these two events A and B are dependent or independent events. Like what? A is first event. We have drawn the ball. How many balls are there totally? I said 17 balls are there. From, from the bag, I have taken one ball. I have seen its color. I replaced it. And second time, I have drawn another ball and uh, I have seen its color. I replaced it. Then, they are dependent or independent events. Common sense. Common sense. If uh, it is a dependent event on A, then the total number of balls must be changed. In the first case, there are 17 balls. Because I have replaced the ball, in the second case also, total number of balls remains the same, 17 only. Understand it, please. 17 only. So, so these two are said to be independent events. If the ball is replaced in the bag, the occurrence of first event is no way influencing the occurrence of second event because the total number of balls are remaining the same. But in the first event, I have taken a ball. I have seen its color. I liked its color. I like this color. And I have not replaced that uh, ball in the bag and I have kept it in my pocket. And second time, I am drawing another ball. And I have seen its color. Of course, that event is named as B. So what happens, the occurrence of first event, the ball taken but not replaced and it is kept in the pocket. In the first time, 17 balls are there. Now second time, only 16 balls are there. There is a total number of balls are changing. That means the occurrence of event A is influencing the occurrence of 
event B. That is why there are said to be dependent events. Simply, they are said to be dependent events. So, you, you must know clearly the difference between uh, the dependent and independent events. In the definition itself, you can, in the name itself, you can understand dependent means the occurrence of first event influences the occurrence of the second. Independent event means uh, the occurrence of one event does not influence the occurrence of another event. Okay, now <clears throat> we will define now multiplication theorem. multiplication theorem or compound probability what is the multiplication theorem multiplication theorem is simply it is got by p of a intersection b is equal to p of a into p of b after a so what does it mean? It is multiplied. That is why it's said to be the multiplication theorem. Simply, whenever you're asked to, even the board level also, whenever you're asked to find out or uh, derive the multiplication theorem on probability or compound probability, then first of all, you must write the definition of conditional probability and then simply cross multiply to get the statement. P of A into section B is equal to P of A into P of B after A. So this is to be used when you get dependent. Understand that. This is to be used whenever you have dependent events. But when there are independent events, uh, how do you write this? This is very simple. Very simple. Like when they are independent, B does not depend on A. Irrespective of the occurrence of A, B occurs. That means it no way depends on A. That means uh, P of B after A becomes P of B simply. We don't, we don't need to know about A. That is why if there are independent events, understand P of A intersection B is nothing but P of A into P of B. If there are uh, independent events, I'm very happy today because some of the students are sincerely following my lesson because I wrote one seven and he immediately pointed it out. I'm very happy if you have any such doubts or whatever the requirements you have, please, please call up and tell us and accordingly we will, uh, I'll modify my teaching according to your needs, your needs, okay. If you have any doubts, you just mail us, mail us and uh, uh, through that mail we will respond, okay. So, this is multiplication theorem on probability for dependent events it is uh, P of A intersection B is equal to P of A into P of B after A and P of A intersection B is equal to P of A into P of B. No need of uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, knowing about A because uh, they are independent. They are independent. So simply in this case intersection becomes into. Then you might get doubt. How do we know that? How do we know it is dependent? It is independent and we are getting confused while working out the problem. You might have come across this type of problem. There are three students. Their capabilities of solving a problem is given. Let me say 1 by 3, 1 by 4, 1 by 5. A problem is given to the two students, three students, whose capabilities of solving the problem is 1 by 3, 1 by 4, 1 by 5. And I need, I need the problem to be solved if all the three, if all the three students try to solve the problem. If all the three try to solve the problem. Then in such a case, it's common sense. The intelligence is independent because my intelligence does not depend on his intelligence and his intelligence does not depend on third one's in intelligence. So understand that please, understand that. That means unless and until you copy from the others, your intelligence is always independent. Do you understand? So in the case A intersection B intersection C, you can straight away write intersection as into. So that's our common sense. So in such type of problems, you think more generally. Whenever uh, a problem is given in a class, 30 students are there, a problem is given in the class and uh, you're asked to solve the problem independently. Independently, that's what I'm saying, independently. Then in such a case, what happens? Intersection becomes into. Okay. So we'll work out more and more problems on this one. 
next session and after that you will have Bayes theorem also very interesting very very interesting and also simple thing simple Bayes theorem we will discuss that in the next session and keep watching cat tv